So I hope we digest everything that we heard last time because the, it's, it's very important to, to know that we, we're not just going to, to dream. There is a very tight connection between the way we behave. If we are more spiritual, we are more physical, or whatever we do during the day, it will affect the way I dream. Because the dream is a message to help me, and not just to wake up in the morning, wow, I had a good dream. Okay. So what are you going to do with that? Nothing. The dream is a message for me to understand if I do something right or wrong. It's like a person receive a letter and never opened it. Same thing. It's kind of an email, electronic email. Whoop, comes in and we have to know what to do with it. If not, so whatever, we can say bad dream, good dream. But that's it. Why? Who cares? But we have to understand that there is a person that we all know that says, I have a dream. Right? What's his name? Well, I have a dream. Why we say, we also say, that we have a dream about something. It means, not only when we sleep, when we are awake, we say, I have a dream about something. Why we use that word? In what connotation it is? Dream, and I'm not sleeping. But still, I can say I have a vision, right? I have an idea. Why do we say? Simple. We really, really don't believe it's going to happen. I have a dream. It's something that it's really far. Of course, hopefully it's going to happen. If it's going to happen, me, I did it. And if not, I have a dream. See, then we can get away. But if I say I have a vision, then I have to pursue it. I have to chase it. I have to make an effort for it. So that's why we use the word dream. Not only when we sleep. Because what's the reason? And we have to understand there is a lot in the Torah and the Zohar explains the things of the dream means there is a person that going through a process and somehow Always we have to understand the light, even if I'm not really doing good connection with the light. From the light, because his infinite force of just giving and, and wants to help us. We call it merciful. It means mercy. It means time. He gives us all the time that we need to change things, to correct things. So a person makes even a mistake or whatever it is, or he doesn't even know what's going to happen. From the light point, the light always going to give me the chance to understand how to do it right. Now there is my side, my end, I didn't get it. And that's where we have to know that the Zohar tells us, for example, that King David never had, never had a good dream. One, one thing that we have to know, that to have a good dream, not going to give us anything. Anything. We don't ask usually about it. If you pay attention to yourself, usually you want to know something about dream, only when it sounds or it feels bad. Oh, I need to know. Oh, this happened, okay. A good dream, <laughs> you know, I had a good dream, okay. We don't even tell anybody. Just enjoy it. And we don't even know what was the dream about. But it was nice, you know, it feels good. There is a little book, there is many books, by the way, but there is a little book that Judah Berg uh, wrote, I don't know if you saw, a little book about also dreams and about sleep. It's, anybody have the book, uh, read the book? Okay, so 
You know, Yuda also wrote in the book that something that we call Hatavat Halom, how to correct the dream. Okay, so already we know that we don't have to correct a good dream. It means a person is not going to make any effort to change something about good dream. What's to change? It's nice. In life we do the same thing, by the way. When things look good to us even, we're not going to try to change anything. See, that's another problem that we have to connect. See, we look at life. One thing, we dream, it's another thing. No, it's the same. We have to know that when everything is good, it means something really bad is happening. How can it be? Because who's putting me to sleep not to see? I mean, it has to be that there is something. It can be that the opponent went to sleep. He is not going to vacation ever. Ever. Even when we sleep, he's not sleeping. When we go to vacation, he's still working. So... You know, Satan never takes off. So I have to understand, how come everything looks okay? That's the time that we have to ask more help from the light than when it's bad. Because when it's bad, I'm already alert. I'm going to try to do something about it. Obviously, a person is not going to do nothing when he has pain. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's emotionally or physically. It's not going to rest until it's going to feel good. But when, when something looks good, what are we going to do? So we have to understand that Atavat Halom, when you wake up and you have bad dream, there is something for me to do. I have to do something somehow to cancel the decree. You know, for example, we had friends in L.A., that had a bad dream, okay, and I showed her, you know, you have to come in the morning, it's better in the morning, you know, there is three guys, they are like the judge, they sit, you stand in front of them, and there is conversation, anybody did before? Okay, there is conversation, it means you have to say something, someone have to help you, to, you know, and then they say something. You say, they say, you say, they say. It's the whole thing, you know, to cancel that decree. So what happened, for example, in her case, later on, she saw the whole movie physically happen, except that part, the bad part, being cancelled. We have to understand that we getting the message ahead because you have to understand, what does it mean, bad dream? Actually, bad dream, it's a good dream. I'm asking you. If something going to happen to you, God forbid, something going to happen to you bad, don't you like to know before? Maybe you're going to have a chance to correct it? Yes or no? If not, it's going to happen to you. Obviously, we're going to say, I wish that I knew something before. So actually, it's a good dream. It's wake up dream, not wake up from sleeping, wake up from where you are. Because the dream is to tell me that the path, that something that I'm doing is wrong. The way I think, the way my consciousness, something is wrong. Of course, according to the dream, if you have a teacher, you see it and you talk about those little details and also the teacher is supposed to tell you to come to do the correction. We have to know how long King David, it's amazing to, to know for us, because if just to know it as information doesn't make any difference. King David, when he used to sleep, used to sleep very short time. The Zohar calls it Shishim Neshimotsus, 60 time horse breath. It means how long it takes. Even as a horse, right, whatever, how long it takes. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know. That's what he sleeps every night. Why? It says, when a person goes to sleep, he's connected to 
some part of that. When we awake, we connect and board to life. When we sleep, we have to understand the soul lives. And there is only 160, it called. It means the soul is five parts, but actually it's 60 parts. 59 lives every night. There is a thread, Chut Shel Chesed, thread of mercy that connects the person. And the minute he wakes up, it pulls back the soul. You remember what we said last time? That when we don't really get to a deep sleep and we wake up, it feels in our mind, it feels like falling. Because the soul comes back and the body is shaking. Boom! I mean, well, how come? You, you're supposed to sleep and your soul comes back or leaves. You, you're not supposed to, see, to feel anything. No, it's not true. So that's why King David knew that every time he goes to sleep, he's going to connect to what? To life or death? That. So he doesn't want to connect to it. So he slept very short. And we don't have it much because it's not easy for us. We go to sleep. To sleep. Why? You remember why? Because the, the war that we have within makes us so tired. So it means that the light in me is stronger or the evil inclination is stronger. Then I'm going to be more tired. Just ask yourself what we said last time. When I'm more happy, I'm more tired? Or when I'm upset, I'm more tired? We know the answer. The more you're upset, you're going to be more tired. Very simple. So we have to know that if we sleep long time, it means we are depressed. Not only sad, we, maybe we... Me, now, look! Uh, a show? We all know how to do. To smile? That's not a smile. You can do this, hi, how are you, inside? We know what's going on. What we show people, it's what we want them to see. And what you see with others is what they want you to see. So don't think when you look at someone, doesn't matter where, TV, newspaper, around you, you think what you see, that's what it is? No, never. Not sometimes, never. It's only what the other person wants you to see. So the same thing, we have to understand that when we connect to that force that called that is when we go to sleep. Because a person is a complete out. If he's going to die, really, would he know? No. Many people don't wake up. Same thing. Sleeping and death is the same thing. We don't feel nothing. And that's why when we go to sleep, we have to understand to do something that is going to help us. Use this. Believe me. Dialing God from page 58 to 80. Is, do, do you have it? If someone has it, you can even look at that. There is different parts. In page 87, there is a meditation. Nafshi aviticha balayla afrochi bekirbi. So you, we, we have to know, when we go to sleep, think about it, how simple, I hope it's simple for some of you, so maybe for some of you it's going to be too much, but the soul leaves. It's only body, it's empty. Now a person is vulnerable. It means negative forces can enter. You have no way to protect yourself. Imagine you're going to fly with an airplane with no windows. It's going to be a little bit hard, right? So imagine when we sleep, if you could have transparent energy to protect you until the soul comes back. Would you like it? 
Imagine, here. You see the water? Of course you see. Can I touch the water? Same thing. Exactly as you see it. Can I touch it? But I see it. So we sleep, and there is a field of energy. That field of energy, not only that going to help me to protect me, it's going to help me to make a good connection with different things. That when I'm sleeping, I'm not just sleeping, and there is no way for me to protect myself. I need to know. So, this is what we need to do, actually, all the way from page 58 to 80. Believe me, it's going to take a few minutes. Nothing compared to movie that you just saw, maybe before you went to sleep, two hours. Maybe you were talking gossip and Lashon Ara with some friend on the phone about two and a half hours, you know. She said, oh, what, she sa- what you said and all that. I mean, we love this, right? We're not going to say, I need to sleep, I'm sorry. Give me more. And we love it. So when we say the Shema before we sleep, why do we want to say, I, I hope you're familiar with the Shema Israel. Okay, the Shema Yisrael, even when we do it in the morning, whoever does it, there is 248 words, correspond to 248 bone segments, that if those bone segments are not going to get the vibration of life, it's like charging the phone, it might, you know, going through an illness that we're going to meet soon, but we don't know. Does anybody get an email, you know, you're going to be ill soon? No. The person gets ill, and then you have to deal with it. When we do the Shema, we, it's like charging the cell phone, charging those bone segments to get the energy. It's not only the protective shield, it's, it's something that's very powerful, and it will help me to heal myself. Don't forget that the healing is also by dreaming. But a lot of time, we dream, we wake up sweating in the middle of the night. I mean, the air conditioning is on. Why are we sweating? From fear. Sometimes we get that fear even when we are awake. When we say the 248 words... It's, it's divided to four paragraphs. According to the name of God. Yud Ke Vavke. Same thing, the four elements, the DNA of a person. Air, water, fire, and the physical, we call it earth. Okay? The first part is 42 words that Connect us also. What's 42? Testing you. Ana Bekoah. So already I'm getting also the Ana Bekoah while I'm doing it. In the first part. The second part, exactly 72 words. Connecting us. 72 names of God. The third part is 50 words. Connecting us. 50 gates of Bina. That we reach every night, we have tapping in to this energy. We get it on Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, like once or twice a year. It's amazing. The, the last part, it's 72 again, in a different order, to confuse the opponent, Satan. So it doesn't have the ability to have the access and to interfere my life when I'm sleeping. When we say the first sentence, even if you are by yourself, the first sentence, we're supposed to put our right hand and to say Shema Yisrael. Shem Echad in the end. When we put the hands, we activate our own soul. The real part of our own soul is not right here in the body. This is the lower part. This is Helek Elokai Mima. It's only one spark of the real soul that it's always in Bina. 
that part in Bina, it's connecting to the light and bring me the light to this world. So if I don't put my hand, my soul cannot put the hand. I activate whatever I do here, it happens up there. You don't do it. So that's why we learn when we do something negative, we create something negative over there. When we do something positive, we call it, we create also. And then we are surprised when we ask those questions. Where did it come from? You know, when things happen. It comes from who? But it doesn't go like this, directly here. It goes this way and comes back. You know those uh, movies like cartoon? They shoot a bullet, it goes all the way from the ship, and then it goes back down and makes a hole. Uh, we love those, right? But when we are not on the boat, we love it. That's what we do. We shoot the bullet up, and then we don't have bullet, don't worry. It's coming back soon. Yeah. Boom. That's how we find our lives all over the place. So that's when we do the hand it's also to remind us the only way to receive light is with re re restriction. Where there is no way to receive light only because I want. That's it, I want. So, even when a person wants to go study, study, you know, you go to university or you go, is that something easy to do? You see? So, by doing it, I'm doing restriction because it's not easy to do. I have to stay awake after midnight almost every night to just to do the homework and to prepare the essay, to do this. You know. Whoever went through that knows. That's restriction. Just, I want to study, is that enough? No, I want to study, yeah, okay. Without doing it? No. Same thing. The minute we put the hand, we activate it. When we say the words, that's how we receive light. Another part, also in the book, you can read all that, whoever read it. There is a part that called the Alzu Hasidim, is, that's how it says, the, the headline. It's to actually, to help us, every time we say that part, okay, it's to help us to remove the bad angels, and soon I hope uh, we're going to talk about it today, maybe uh, next time. But we... According to the way we behave, we create angels. And angels is not like you see in a movie, you know, those big wings. And, I mean, no, it's capsules of energy that actually a person creates. We create them all week according to the way we behave. Friday night, only Friday night. Some people come here Friday night because, you know, I, I like it. It's nice. It's not only about nice. That's being religious. It means I'm doing it because someone said it's okay. When we create the angels, they are angels with no soul, with no energy. We create them. When we come here, we actually activate them, especially after the connection, we start singing a song about the angels, if you know that song, and I'm not going to teach you about it in this course, but we sing the songs, and if you pay attention, every sentence three times. That time, in the first three sentences, the first three, is Yud Ke Vav, they get the energy, and the minute they get it, they're waiting for the last sentence, Malchut, and if you hear and you understand or you ask, it means leshalom. They leave. The minute they got it, they leave. When they leave, it means I created them. Now they got the, the light, the energy. Now they give me the energy. Imagine you created bad angels. Oops. So that's why Friday night, whoever comes, you see people here dancing and it's like in a way it looks like wow it's amazing a person supposed to be not 
happy because everybody is happy, let's do it also. It's okay, but it's not really okay. It's supposed to be happy because finally the, the engines that I created, now I'm going to give them the energy that they need. They're going to live and they're going to give me the energy that I need. But in, in the booklet, you understand that the minute you come to that section that says, Ya'al Zuh Hasidim, I can every night, kind of, there is a way, like an eraser, to remove some bad angels that we create. And we do. We are surprised when things happen sometimes, but we have to understand, I did something. Every action we do creates something. It doesn't disappear. Nothing disappears. Even when you boiled water and you forgot them, you come, there is no water. Yes, you're right. But they didn't disappear. They are just in different form. Same thing. So the Kabbalah is saying, <clears throat> this is something that we have to say, if you look in parentheses, it says three times. And when we do those angels, also three times. If you pay attention, the Anna Bekoach, whoever does, you'll see a period after two words. It's not a sentence, almost. Two words, period. Because angels have six wings, not two. So we have to say, Ana bekoach, gedula at yeminecha, tatir tzura. Two, two, two. Only then you activate the angel. Okay, it's not class about angels, but uh, you need to understand it, because if not, we're going to be robots again, by doing the wrong thing, we have to understand it's a system. If you're learning anything somewhere or you're teaching somewhere anything, if you pay attention, it's all about a system. Everything has a system. We also have a system. This is part of the system. If it was not part of the system, why do we go to sleep? No question about it. We don't ask to dream. We dream. We didn't ask to dream good or bad, and we do. It's part of the system. It works exactly as it needs to be. But the more I understand about the system, I can be part of it already, and not just being there. I don't even know what's going to happen. So that's another part. And then there is Hine Mitato. Okay, another headline that we have to know about that part that stays within, called tread of mercy. Chuchel Chesed. Sixty part leaves, and in that moment that we go to sleep, and really those 59th part left, you're dead. I have to understand that. If I don't want to be completely dead, if you remember last time we said it a little bit different, I don't want to waste just those whatever years in my life that's going to go just, you know, I went to sleep and that's it. 20 years of my life went away. I want to use them for my own benefit. While I'm sleeping, I'm really not just the soul left recharging. Why the soul left? If I was already charged and I was more spiritual and more happy and more sharing, the soul didn't need to leave. So not to understand it, oh, the soul have to live. No, the soul doesn't have to live. If the soul leaves, it's because cannot stand us already. I need to live. And that's why I pay attention when we're really tired or angry, the soul wants to live. Almost immediately, we feel so tired, drained, we call it. I mean, think about it. We use words. Are we containers or something? But that's how we talk about ourselves. I'm drained. So close the faucet. You know? well, well, I mean, we say words. We don't even hear what we say. In this part, we have to understand that at that moment that we read this part, we have to ask a question every night. Did I do 
any change today. Ask. You don't want it's okay. But you have to ask. If you're not going to ask, it means... You take it for granted, for sure. No, of course, I'm, I, I changed. I'm studying Kabbalah, I changed. No, not just by studying I'm changed. I have to make an effort to change. It's not easy to change. So we need to know. Imagine now, imagine. Oh, hopefully not, but imagine. If it was the last day of any person. The last day, he knows he's dying. Usually... They like to do some kind of a change the last day. He didn't talk with someone in the family for 40 years. What is he going to say now? Call him. Exactly. You know, I'm sorry, or this, or that. Why do you want to do it now? You could do it 40 years ago. I mean, who's raising who? We raise the kids or the kids raising us? We raise the kids, right? So pay attention. When the kids fight, two seconds, that's it. They make up. When we fight, it's 20 years or forever. So who's teaching who? So in that moment, we have to ask, did I change today? Every night. Those words will, those words will protect us from the force of death. While we're sleeping. You understand? Because the minute we sleep, we connect to that. But if I say those words, it's going to protect me from the force that called death. I don't know if you study that, you know, because each one here, different time, different study. Not everybody's studying everything, uh, obviously. We have so many holes. Some people study reincarnation, less or more. Some people did. So, but we need to know more. Okay, so the other part that there is also Birkata Kohanim, there is the high priest blessing. It's right there. There is something that when I'm using it is Yud, Yud, Yud. It means one of the name of God, but it's Yud that starts the sentence. You would start the second sentence, and then if you're coming here, you always hear, Yud, 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 the power of healing. So another part of healing, because we have to know, this is the time to get the healing, actually when we sleep. It's amazing. Usually we think healing, I'm going to go to Dwayne Reed, you know, I'm going to get some, those uh, vitamins, the, I have a special box with dates, two, three here. We shove them everywhere, just so those uh, vitamins are going to help you. you know, some people, they are perfect condition, they go to the gym, they are even could be basketball players, and they die. And then there are some people don't go even through those two doors, and that's their life. That's not really formula. If you do a gym, you eat organic food, and you do it, you're going to be okay. You can eat all this and do sport, and you're not with the right consciousness, you're going to die. Perfect shape. <laughs> so we have to understand. I have to remember the 99 in me. This is the soil. You can't buy vitamin. You know. This is the vitamin. can't buy it. So the yud, 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 very important. There is another part that goes through every day except Shabbat. It's called vidui. It means that actually we are confessing, but we don't do it like, you know, sometimes some people, I don't know, I never did it, but they say in the church, you go, you confess. The Kabbalah is saying the real confession that no one can tell you that it's wrong or right, it's to yourself. Whatever we confess, even if you did it with the teacher, or you did it with someone you love, or you did it with the lawyer, or to the priest, the truth is, you're always going to keep something. Those little things, no one's going to know. And those, if you can say it, those the main thing. Who knows about them? 
If you know about them, that's fine. Confess to yourself. That's why on Shabbat we don't need it. When we don't confess, pay attention now, about things, it means we don't admit that we have them. It remains like a residue. You know, what, what really makes something in the one day, after even 20 years, a person is ill? It's accumulation. A person is not ill with cancer or with any disease in a short time. Never. It's accumulation. So if it goes that way, I can start doing it what? Every night? Reverse it. So I'm doing a favor to anybody? No. So when we use the vidui, that part, those words cleaning, but not the cleansing that we do when we are awake. We do a lot of cleansing. I can go to the mikveh. I can do many things. That cleansing cleans only the residue. The things that already was in the past. Pay attention. Not the cleansing that we do in Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur every day. It's what things that I didn't clean. It's there. It's heavy. And according to the words, it's in the order of the alphabet. Every sentence, it's Aleph and then Bet. You know? It's the power of the alphabet. I don't know if I mentioned, you know, soon we're going to have also that class to understand. There is also Anna Bekoah that we're supposed to do, if you didn't know. The best, it's three times a day. Usually, how many, how many times a day? Wake up in the morning, breakfast, Anna Bekoah, nice. But if you look at the, at the way we are, how we live in 24 hours, we have a day, we have night, but we have the middle of the day. It is. So we have to do in the morning. It's better. It's just if you want, you know. It's a tip. And then, just before sundown, it takes two, three minutes. Less than just to prayer. Prepare even a cup of coffee. So, faster. You do another one, and before you sleep, to hold you through the night. It's a lot. No. Our opponent hates it. You know? So that's why we don't like to do so much. But that's another thing that we have to understand. It's... When we do the Anabekoch the at night or every time, morning, use it just to understand. As when you go to the two doors in the hallway and you push the button, it's called elevator. Did you think about it ever? They always call that elevator, even when you go to the basement. Does it elevate you? It took you down. What is the thing that we have to repeat? Is when you say the it's good to do it three times because that's what really elevates my soul. So if I want to elevate my soul, that's what it is. Now we have another part. The meditation on page 87. That meditation called Nafshi Avitich means my soul. This is what Rabbi Ezekiel teaching us is I can have a dream according to my action, according to me, according to my tikkun. Imagine it was a bad dream and then in the morning I have to go and find time to come here, three people, I have to do the correction, right? If we can say that sentence in the real good way. Not maybe immediately, you know, it's going to take time of practice like everything else. I can interfere in the dream. Now it's a little bit hard to get. You know, it's like there is a story inside the story 
a movie inside a movie. Sometimes you read a book. And then in the middle of the book, someone is telling the story. So it's like a book inside a book. I'm, I hope you, you do read. And, uh, same thing. When you dream, your mind says, what do you mean? I'm dreaming and I can interfere? Absolutely, yes. We can interfere in the dream and start to correct it in the dream itself. Now, that's the best, actually. It's the highest level. You can do it. Then you have to wake up. Feel bad a little bit. And then you have to do uh, uh, that correction. Sometimes you have to do also tzedakah because maybe there uh, was something real heavy that you have to pay for it now. Something that's going to remove your uh, degree. So this is to get control in your dream. Very important. Another part page 122 also, uh, in the book, not in, in, the, in the dialing God, in the book, whoever have the book, it, it says, Lam Natser. Okay? You have it here too, of course. Lam Natser, it's uh, page uh, 87 in the bottom. It says that when we say that Part, when we say it, it will help us in something that usually we don't pay attention. We want to do something about it, but we, you know, it's our, to help our own memory. You know how many times we talk to each other and say, I, I forgot what I wanted to say. Even in the middle of a conversation. You were talking, the other person said something, and now you say, I lost it. Really? You wanted to say it, and where is it? Right here. <laughs> in other expressions, you know. Okay, so say it. We can't say it because our own memory, if we didn't know, the memory belonged to the soul, doesn't belong to the body. We know it, when a person comes to this world and is a singer. We call it a gift. What gift? It's a memory. The person did it already. He's coming with it. Same thing, negative. Same thing, everything. So when you go and you look for a job, you know what it says in the ad? They want five years experience. You, you see it? Or you're asking as a boss, okay, what does it mean? What does it mean? Five years experience. Five years memory that someone else paid you to make all the mistakes. Now I'm going to pay you that you're not going to make the mistakes in my business. That's really what it is. That's why they are willing to pay you more. If you have the five years experience, it means someone else paid you for the mistakes. Now you're coming with the memories how to do it right. If I don't have good memory, you can't even study, by the way. The whole thing about studying, not talking about cheating. Talking about studying. Cheating, everybody can do it. But you can tell when they come with the paper, they have the paper on the inside. It's empty. No one hires them. They, they work a little bit and mm, out. We don't. It's not experience. Uh, the person doesn't even know what he's doing. So if you want to hire someone, you're going to pay for them. What do you want? A person that knows what he's doing? Or you have a paper, degree? Just the paper. Same thing. If I want to activate my memory to a higher degree, you see what I'm saying? What the Kabbal is saying? It's not just, I went to sleep and that's it. We're using it. To our own benefit. I wake up in the morning and there is something that's going to be better in me. I wake up in a higher level, not the same. Because if you wake up every morning and your life is the same, so what did you do? Why waste every 24 hours between 8 to 10 hours for nothing? You give me the answer. You have the answer? You don't want to waste it, I hope. That's why you are here, right? 
you thought you were going to study only about dreams. Black cat is uh, and the elephant is this. That's what you want. That's easy. Take a book, read all the uh, animals and all the symbols, and that's it. No, that we're going to study too. Yeah. But that's you'll see. That's the easy part. That's the part that's going to make the difference in my life. That I understand that I can activate my memory to help me in my life. And that's Lam Natser. In the book, if you want to read it also, if you read it, maybe now it's going to be easier to understand it. In the booklet, I said, page 87, same page, in the bottom, Lam Natser, to activate the memory. And then it says, in Tishkav, another headline, in the book, it's uh, page 125, it says that actually when we sleep, we have to know that we're letting go of the soul. It's not mine. I've been borrowed. They gave me the soul. I'm here because I don't think I'm a soul. I think I'm a person walking, eating, drinking, paying bills. I forget that I have a soul. How many of you, every morning, waking up, every morning, and through the whole day, really knowing, really, in consciousness, in every move, every talk, that I have a soul within? None of us. Because I need to eat, I need to work, Oh my God, I forgot this, I forgot that, you know. And then we come to a class. Now I'm spiritual. And then I come to Osh Hodesh. Now I'm spiritual. Once a month. And then we come to Shabbat. Now I'm spiritual. During the day, I'm a working person. Forget my soul. But we forget if I didn't have the soul, I couldn't work. So while I'm sleeping, even I can activate my soul. And that's what it is. It says, Im tishkav, it means that I let go of my soul. And in the morning, it's like, it's like you, you know those stores, how they call those stores? Pound shop? That you, you give something and they give you money. If you give the money back, they give you, you know, every night we do something like that. Here is my soul. I hope I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to get it in the morning. What do we say if we know the system? In the morning we say, Modeani, if we know the system. But I'm not teaching every little part, but you have to understand. Modeani, it means you're saying, thank you God for giving me back the soul. That means that at night I let go. But if I didn't let go, why you say thank you? You didn't let go, it's yours. See, some people are religious in their head. They wake up in the morning, Modani. Did you let go at night? What did you let go? What? System. If you do it right, it comes back in the morning. Because if you remember last week we talked about it, who believe in who? We believe in the light. No. Who gives me back the soul? The light. So he believe in me. That I'm going to change today. Here, take it back, try to change. Next day, take it back, hopefully today. Next day, maybe today. Next day, maybe today. 50 years, maybe today. You're dying almost, maybe today. You know what? It's okay. I'm God. I'm going to give you again. The soul, I'm going to give you. Bowing you that part of light, the soul. Go get another body. Try to do it. Another day. Change. Modani. Change. Modani. Change. Modani. Every night. And we don't change. At least to know. And start understanding that it's for my own benefit. I'm not doing anybody. 
And another part, very important, even if you heard it a million times, we didn't do it right. I'm reading the Zohar every night. It's one of the most important parts to read the Zohar at night. Because when I read it, <clears throat> I really make sure that the soul is not just traveling anywhere. It's going in the right place. I'm doing a favor now when my soul is going to the right place. No. I'm doing something unbelievable for myself. That in the morning my soul coming back charged with light. And not I wake up in the morning and many times it happens that the person wakes up upset. He says, another day, I know where I'm going. I know who's going to bug me today. I know this person. I know everything. When a person really connects to Rabbi Shimon, and you have to understand, to read the Zohar means I know I'm the student of Rabbi Shimon. Not just to sing the song. So that's... Yes. You know, the Soha is very, very big, very large. Do you have any uh, recommendation which part? Yes. Very simple. The weekly portion. Always. Before you sleep. Which one? The weekly. Every week, there's the portion of the week. So if you don't have it, go to the bookstore. They give you the chart. And there is day, uh, the dates and exactly what parts to read. Even pages. Some of you have it, right? Okay. If you come to the Zohar class, that's the portion of the week. Okay. Like this portion is... Vaishlah. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if we have a problem, if we have a problem, sometimes we do. Maybe relationship, maybe health. Then we do Pinchas or we do Chesara, something to help us. In addition to the weekly, a few more pages to help me also with something that I'm going through. That's another part. But if I don't have it, I don't need to go and access uh, some light that I really need right now. The weekly is something that very important for us before we go to sleep. And don't forget, don't forget, very important, is when we do anything of that, have at least one person in your list to meditate for. If you do all this, even if it's so good, it's so perfect, you know, the booklet and this and the Zohar, and you have no one to meditate for, it's not so good. Because how can I be spiritual and thinking about only me? Me is not the light in me. If it's only me, it's the opponent. I hope you understood it already in Pav Kabbalah 1. Yes? Uh, when we talk in our sleep, is it for the other to hear something that we can't say to them? Or is it just... Okay. I wanted to talk about it, but I'll... Uh, when, when a person, there is few levels. There is talking, there is walking too. You know, perfect balance, by the way. A person can walk on a tread. It's not going to fall. If you wake him, he's dying. Immediately he's going to fall. Okay. Talking in the sleep, it means we're not letting go completely. The soul is still in a much lower level. And when we wake up exhausted, like your, your dreams were so, like it took over so much of your sleep. That Does you the, next week we're going to study about the levels. There is four levels of dream. The one that you just said, exhausted, it's one of them. We're going to study about them. So you have to understand, again, it's two things. The way things happen to me during the day or week or whatever time. And that I don't know how to let go. When I sleep, I have to know how to let go. One of the ways to receive much more light, is to know that at night, I have to go and through the day and see, where did I make mistake? Not to repeat again. Where did I hurt anybody? 
that I hope that that person is, gonna, is not going to be, we call it punished, it means hurt because of me. And when you go through the day and you see all that, and you really forgive every person that kind of, you say, he hurt you, if you're not going to forgive that person, and he might be hurt on your account, the payment is huge. It's better to let go and to forgive completely. Could be even family. Because who's going to be hurt? The person more than the person that we don't forgive. So before we sleep, we need to know how to read the Zohar and to go through those questions and to let go. When we do it really, you won't believe. Even if you sleep on the floor on stone, you're going to sleep better than the best mattress with 30 years warranty. Everybody buys the mattress with the warranty, they forget to get their warranty for the person that's going to sleep on it. That's what we're doing here. Yes. Yes. But uh, finally, uh, where is the source of the dream? It is our consciousness. Is our soul. Is it Next week, we're going to understand. It's angels. It's according to my action. And there is... Connection. The, the dreams is according to the level we go. The soul doesn't go to everybody to the same level. We'll hear it next week. Some people go in a very low level, and we talk about it next week. Second level, third level, fourth level. Sometimes it could happen to all of us once in a lifetime, the fourth level. But I, if I study and practice it, I can go there every night. It's up to who? God? Up to God, we got all, everything. You got it already. It's up to me to connect to it. Okay? So you're going to be ready for next week to know about the levels. Uh, you're not going to like it, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So thank you, everybody.